if Amanda goes, I want a right back and I want this right back, I like to think that the technical director, or sporting director, whatever they're called, scout would go, I understand that, but for the criteria you're looking for, like if you want an inverted fullback, for instance, mm-hmm. you want such and such and such, here's a list of three others who I think are probably better suited to, to our system. I know you like this right back, but I'm telling you now, look at this guy's stats, look what he does really well. I'd like to think there's that dialogue, and that, that's certainly been the case at Arsenal with Edu and Arteta, because there have been times where Arteta's had some big decisions to make. I but you saw it in the documentary where he wanted a Bamiang out. Yeah, but that's Arteta making that decision. No, but my point is that, that, that Edu and that could have said no. They could have got they're, they're above I, him. I know, but then what's the point of That's why I said a relationship relationships are key. So do you remember at Liverpool where Robbie Keane went there? Yeah. I can't remember who the manager was. Might have been Julia, but I can't remember. I don't think it was Julia. Because this would have been Who'd it been? Was it Roy? Mm. I can't remember who it was but effectively the manager didn't want him No, didn't play him didn't play him in the right position I think he played him out wide yeah. effectively it did work and he left I think he went back to Spurs after that that's my point yeah but that's, my, that's where the relationship is more important than anything because you can't just have a manager going I want this I want that and you, you will bow at my the, the demands but, but that that's always worked in the past yeah but now it's changing the whole thing's changing now Like that, that's no longer the, 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 the case where managers can just pick and choose what they want but imagine someone above Pep yeah. Saying to Pep, no, you don't. Yeah, but again, you, you don't want him. I'll tell you, we want. Yeah, but, and you're like, well, sorry, yeah, what? Yeah, but again, listen, I, I don't know if it's true or not. Well, actually, I'm not, I know you're going to talk about Harland. Yeah, he. It, I don't it, know if that's true. Hundred percent, hundred percent, it's true, right? Pep needed convincing to sign Harland. Convincing, like power play, power play. This is what he can do. Look what he can do. They need to convince him. And I'm not saying, but, but if he would have said no. He wouldn't have gone to Man City. Okay, I understand that, but this is what I'm talking about. It's about relationships. You you can't just have one. You, you can't have uh, sporting directors and managers bumping heads. There's got to be a conversation where I want this player, and yes, I understand you want that player, but look at these other three options. Look, they're playing better, and they will do exactly what you want. I know, but I th- I think it's even nuts that you'll get a sporting director to tell the manager what style of play they want at the club. No, but if the manager goes, I need an inver- like an inverted fullback, someone who does this. It's their chief exec and the scouts' job to go out and find that player. Do you know what I mean? I agree, I agree with you. Because I'm pretty sure Unai Emery, and I think he's got his sauce. Right. I'm sure, and that's the Villa fans will know probably more than I will, I swear Unai Emery, he, his job is to manage the team. Yes. And he's brought in someone else with him to oversee everything else. Mm-hmm. And, and that's everything. So he's not got to do with any of that. If this if he's, this other person feels like this guy's better suited, that's fine. I will just coach this. You deal with all that. And look how, look th- how, and look how it's working for them. I think it's important. You made a point. I think it's important that the, the manager and the technical director have a Monchi's work. Monchi's name is, I think, is Monchi. Okay. I think it's important. Like at Arsenal, you mentioned Edu there and Arteta. Mm. I think it's important you have that relationship between the manager and the technical director. Yeah. That's a, a little bit like David Gill and Sir Alex, right? Yeah. If that relationship's not there, you've got no chance. Mm-hmm. But I just, for the life of me, can't see how it's going to work. If, if, when, if, when, if, when a board of people sit down and discuss who they think they need. No, but the manager will give them an idea. But remember, as a manager, it's, it's, it's so demanding anyway. The last thing you want to be doing is trying to coach your team on a Saturday and then in the week doing um, the, the, oh, the, no, the game yeah, okay. and then let, trying to find... Let, the let's just say, right, for a moment's sake, that the board decided to get Anthony. My understanding is that Eric Tenag identified him yeah. and... and he his understanding was he'd go for about 45, 50 million mm-hmm. but because he said he wanted him the board went out and got him and eventually they agreed on something ridiculous like 90 million okay. pounds let's just say that the board identify Anthony as the player they need yeah right and then you've got Eric Tenag there and he plays a few games he's thinking, no he's not for me Eric Tenag gets a sack new manager comes in and goes this is what you've got to work with he would have seen Anthony play he'd go do you know what he's not for I don't, I don't want him yeah but again that's where it's, it's about relationships it's about work ethic do you know what I mean and also with the player and the sporting director I think that that relationship between the sporting director and the manager is key you've got to be on the same page because surely when I look at and again I'm not picking on him you look at some of the Eric Ten Hag signings right and the players he's worked with how like you look at Kudos at West Ham compared to Anthony like who sanctioned that mm. but that's, that's Eric Ten Hag going I want him I want him he obviously worked with Amrabat before I think it is he, do you know what I mean? Surely, at times, I think Eric Ten Hag needs saving from himself. At times, he's made some good signings. But, but isn't that then the case of a manager's choosing badly, but sometimes you get a manager that chooses well? Yeah, I get that. But that, again, it comes down to conversation. I don't think it should be one person's decision. I think there should be a conversation where I want this player. That's good. If that's what you want, fine. But let's have a conversation okay. about these others as well. Because okay. they're better suited for you this. You think that's the way forward? I think so. Okay. Uh, let's take as many calls as we can now. And then after the break, 03717. Double two, double three, double four. That's the number that Luke has dialed. Hello, Luke. How's it going? You okay? I'm great. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. So what's what's your view on everything we've just been speaking about, Luke? 
Yeah, so going back a little bit earlier with, with regards to the manager, um, I think the manager is completely overrated, uh, especially if, more so in football than anything else. I don't actually think it makes that much of a difference. Um, there's evidence for that as well. I know Soconomics did it um, over a 10-year period, and they account for it about 8% uh, a manager affects things. You can, act with, you can predict where a team will finish based on how much they pay the players. We've got evidence of this in real time. Klopp, one of the best managers in the world, took over Liverpool in eighth. Yeah? Yeah. Where yeah. did he finish? He finished in eighth. Arteta took over a team in eighth. They finished in eighth. Pep took over a team that scraped fourth. The season after, he finished third. None of them saw improvements until they brought the players in. So if Klopp was that good, why could he not improve the team? Um, okay, but the counter argument for that is yeah. Aston Villa, right? When when um, uh, Unai Emery went yeah. there, Stephen Gerrard, they were in what the bottom three, bottom five, and he had the, I, basically the same set of players, and he got them Champions League football. Yeah, correct. There, there is some exceptions to the rule, like Tuchel when he took over at Chelsea and t- uh, took from eight to fourth, won the Champions League. Even Moyes taken over uh, from Fergie. However, the vast majority of the time, there's no changes. Okay. United have sacked managers three times mid-season, always finished the same. Most of the time, there's no difference. Luke, let me, now, Luke, let me answer your question then. Do you think Man United would be Manchester United? Do you, think if Fer- do you think Fergie would have been irrelevant? Do you think that Manchester United team would have still won what they did without him? So, as I said, there is exceptions to it, and they account for about 10%, and there is exceptional managers, and there is terrible managers as well. The vast majority are in the middle. So now and again, you can get an exceptional manager. But don't forget with Fergie, when did we start winning? Uh, I'm a United fan. When did we start winning Premier Leagues? After seven years of buying all better yeah. players, he did not mm. win anything with the team he inherited. And that never happens, ever. Um, okay. So it, it, at the bottom uh, of the apart, table... Apart from Arteta, of course, who inherited Uno Emery's team on the FA Cup. No so, problem. Right, if you're going to give him credit, for, a cup is completely different because yeah. it, it's... You're playing one game at a time, aren't you? So that that, that you, you can you can draw a game, can't you? And get through. We talk if you talk about Premier League uh, completely. Okay. The, the, okay. the, otherwise, Pellegrini would be uh, Pellegrini got sat from West Ham, but he won the league at Manchester City. So either he's he was he's he's he a great manager or is he a rubbish manager? Which one? Well, or thanks for your call. Or he just had a completely different set of players at one club to the other. Oh yeah, better players. Yeah. I, I always think the most important thing that you need good players. I know. Yeah, of course. I, I think managers, yes, because we were having that discussion, weren't we, in the meeting room about would you rather have Pep as oh, your that, manager? Yeah, okay, we'll we'll put that question out there now as well because that's a great question. Yeah, you, you, well, well done for reminding me. No worries. The question was, who would win the league first? Is it Pep managing Spurs or is it Ange managing Man City? See, same I, same group of players. See, I'm going Ange managing Man City because they've got better players. I know, but he plays such a high line. Yeah, but he'd obviously adapt with those okay. players. Let me, I'll ask that question again. Who would win the league first? If Pep went to Spurs with the players Spurs have got now, or Ange went to City? Basically a job swap. Yeah, Ange, come on. Okay. He's got the best striker on the planet. I know, but you've got the best manager on the planet. No. Oh three seven one seven double two double three to four. Great question. That and loads more. Uh, you can answer that one by picking up the phone and dialing in. Number again for our new listeners is oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.